I'm Danny Flexon. Welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Reflections. We're here every Monday, 4.30pm, to reflect on the boxing that's taken place over the weekend. And I've got to say, I haven't caught up yet with the US show that saw Jamel Herring retain his world title by disqualification against Jonathan Oquendo. But I did watch, unsurprisingly, seeing as we were streaming it, the uh, Mick Hennessy or Hennessy Sports Show topped by a superb fight, as it turned out, between European super featherweight champion Samir Ziani and his challenger, London's own Alex Dilmagani. Now, we streamed the undercard um, because there wasn't another outlet for it. We wanted to make it available for everyone. But we also streamed the main two fights, those featuring Ziani and Isaac Chamberlain, for viewers who aren't in the UK or Ireland because the rights were only sold to Channel 5 for those regions. And getting past all of that and the fact that, thankfully, we didn't achieve the lowest post-lockdown figures for boxing, um, perhaps because we're free and easily accessible helps, I suppose. But yeah, having avoided that dubious honour or dishonour, um, we can talk about the action itself. And it was pretty good on the whole, particularly the main event, as we certainly predicted it would be. Um, Alex Dilmagani was arguably in the UK fight of 2019. His draw with Francisco Fonseca was absolutely gripping, absorbing war of a fight. Um, and this one wasn't much different, to be honest. Um, it looked like he was on his way to becoming the new European champion after six rounds. Um, I had him up for either 4-2 or 5-1. He was doing very well. Um, although it was right from the start, it was a close quarters battle of attrition. Um, it seemed to be Dilmagani early on, who was the one getting a little bit more space um, to unload fast combinations and accurate body shots, particularly with the right hand in a battle between two southpaws. Um, but as time went on, Ziani pulled it back and ultimately took over. Um, he was strong. He had an underrated um, cleverness, smartness about him as well. Um, was really good on the inside, particularly with uppercuts and short left hook. Uh, sorry, short left hands and short right hooks. Um, very experienced. I think that came into play as well um, towards the end. I mean, Dil Magani's sparred and fought in various different countries, but in terms of amount of pro fights, I think uh, Ziani was definitely the closer to being a veteran in there. And as it went down the stretch, um, both men were cut. Um, Dil Magani took, uh, was marked up worse, I think, than Ziani. And Ziani just poured it on down the stretch. He was relentless. The pace he set from first bell to when it um, when Dil Magani was ultimately stopped in the final round was just brutal, brutal pace. And Dil Magani, for the most part, stayed with him. Um, but then when it got right towards the end, and he'd been knocked down a few times, so it looked like he was heading for a points defeat regardless, and um, was finally stopped, and rightly so, probably belatedly, by the referee. Um, but brave effort by Dil Magani. He was right in the fight till just the, the round before the final round, I'd say. Um, and he can come again. Um, he might gain from the experience, although at first glance it did appear to be more of a career shortening type of fight. Let's hope he has a nice rest, refreshes, and he comes back ready to compete again. I mean, that was for the European title. We could still see Dil Magani challenging at domestic level Super Fairway, and there he might find that he's a bit more um, successful um, than he has been in his last two fights. But uh, an absolutely gripping, absorbing headliner. Uh, the second time in a row for Dil Magani and on Channel 5 to a live terrestrial TV audience. To our fans out there, um, outside the UK and Ireland, on Seconds Out, of course, um, we hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, the Undercard, which again we uh, did exclusively live, globally, um, I hope everyone enjoyed that. I should mention as well, on the main card, Isaac Chamberlain got rid of Matt Sen in 50 seconds. Obviously, next time Chamberlain's out, which will probably be November the 14th, I think it is, the next Tennessee show. We hope he takes a step up in class because he's incredibly talented. Um, but it seemed like a bit of a competition who could get their opponent out of there first after Stevie McKenna made his British debut, highly touted Irishman, and got rid of his opponent in 73 seconds. Not quite as quickly as Chamberlain, but looked like an absolute beast, a monster against the class he was fighting. Obviously a, a bit of a journeyman he was up against, it's fair to say, but still impressed. And he wants that Ryan Garcia fight, having apparently purportedly got the better of him in sparring a couple of years ago. Um, also on the undercard, we saw Idris Virgo, who swiftly became one of the most hated men in UK boxing by virtue of the head-to-head -head he had with opponent uh, Scott Williams, I think his name is. I may have got that wrong, but I better double-check. Um, but yeah, um, 
threw water over him, and he, as he had done in his previous head-to-head -head before the show two weeks ago, did the same thing, but took it to a, a greater degree. There was more of a soaking, I'd say, this time. He got involved in a war of words with both his opponent and their team. And just a huge reaction to that on our social media channels um, and on YouTube, and no one seemed to think Idris came out of it with any um, respect or credibility, it's fair to say, and he's got a lot of people now calling him out. Um, but in the ring, he got the job done. He took a wide points decision over Williams. Uh, so fair play to him for that, but I don't think anyone can give him credit for what happened before the fight. And I think he's now become one of the more wanted men, although not particularly for the right reasons, in the UK. Um, so he was good on the undercard. Uh, we've already said Stevie McKenna, but the big upset on the undercard was, of course, Michael Hennessy Jr., son of the promoter, losing his unbeaten record, um, falling to a points defeat, um, unfortunately for him. Uh, big surprise, uh, but he is going in against quite a tough opposition for someone so early in their career. You know, they might be fellow novices or fellow beginners, but they have got good records. He's not going in against the usual, um, you know, journeymen who are just there to take him through the motions and teach him a few tricks. He's going in against people who are coming to win. And on this occasion, I felt it could have gone either way. He didn't um, get his hand raised. I think he'll be he'll be good for the experience, and and if it motivates him to come back better, great. Um, but yeah, that was an entertaining fight as well. So all in all, an entertaining night's action. It didn't go the way for the house fighters that uh, Mick Hennessy would have wanted, but certainly entertained the fans. And I think anyone who's seen this show and the one that preceded it will be back um, ready to watch on Channel Five in November. And um, we certainly can't wait. Obviously, we haven't. Decided yet between the two parties if we're going to carry on with our Boxing Unlock partnership. But if we do, we'll be more than happy to get on board again and help people watch what, you know, was some excellent action this time around. Before I go, just let me know what you think. Uh, what did you make of the Dil Magani Ziani fight? Uh, who, did you, who impressed you on the undercard as well? And what do you make of Idris Virgo's antics? It'd be great to hear your thoughts in the comments below and I'll respond to some of them. Meanwhile, I'll be back on Thursday, 4.30pm um, for Flexpectations, uh, where we'll be looking ahead to the next big show, which is the uh, Anthony Yard return against Dex Bellman, Frank Warren show here in the UK. And I'll be back Monday, 4.30pm for the next Reflections. Really appreciate your time, as always, and I'll see you all soon. Cheers.